today. Awesome. Okay, so you're all ready for your procedure? Yes. And office sinus surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, what questions do you have? I'm a side sleeper, so tonight I can sleep on my side without hurting anything. Yep, you can sleep on your side. We typically recommend having your head slightly elevated when you sleep. Okay. So. For that, so. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm fighting the history of what sinus surgery has been in the past. Yeah. Yeah. This is just going to be so. This is different. Yeah. An office sinus surgery is different. Um, I always tell patients when I usually see you back at one week. There's still some swelling, there's a lot of crusting, there's things I have to do, clean it out. Uh, when I've had patients who've had this in-office procedure come back in a week, I really kind of scratch my head and think, you know, why are you here? Maybe I should have you come back later. So now I usually have you come back at like three weeks. Okay. After this. Do I clean it myself? I can quick get Q-tip or something? You, you don't have to really do anything huh. other than um, put, the, um, put the ointment inside your nose, maybe a little bit of saline spray. You don't have to do a lot of cleaning. Now, if you do have some some blood that dries up here, you can take peroxide and a Q-tip and clean that. Okay. But you don't need to do much yourself as far as taking care of it. What am I going to expect in these first couple of days? What what happens? Yeah. So you can just from the procedure, you can have, it's normal to have a little bit of swelling, so you can have a little bit of pressure, feeling both here here. It's normal to have some drainage from the nose, a little tenderness to the tip of the nose. So if you if you bump into something, you'll, you'll be tender. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, uh, just a little sore. Uh, other than that, you should be feeling fine. Um, we have patients who do this, and the very next day, they're kind of doing their normal thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the caveat that they're not doing anything strenuous, any strenuous activity or exercising. Mm -hmm. So, But we have had patients go back to work the next day. So... You know, I'm used to the two knee replacements, total knee, yeah. so this is, I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to just be... Yeah, so the difference is, because you're not getting general anesthesia, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't affect your blood pressure as much, there's less bleeding, there's also less swelling of the tissues. Uh, your body basically responds like it normally would if you were awake and had some other uh, procedure or injury. Mm -hmm. And so you just, the recovery is not as bad as one when you have general anesthesia. How are you doing as far as being relaxed? calm right now with the medicines you took <laughs> so you took an anti I'm high strung by nature I know, I know. you took, so a, you took really. one anti-anxiety medicine and a you took a pain medication that uh -huh. also calmed you down and you also took the benergen which has some calming effect as well so how do you feel right now i still feel kind of anxious but okay so we're going to have you have another dose of both the narcotic and the and the um, relaxing medicine so i have complete confidence in you great perfect Singer to singer. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I have confidence in you as a patient and in our clinic's ability to take care of you, so it should be good. So what I you can just rest back here. I'm just gonna put this, I'm gonna cover your mouth so this doesn't drip into your mouth. So it's got the numbing medicine on it. A little cotton ball in your nose there. We'll let that wait for just a few minutes, and then I'll be back in about five minutes, and then we'll, we'll put the numbing medicine in there. Um, we think one of the main sinuses we're dealing with are the maxillary sinuses. These are the sinuses behind the cheekbone. And you can see there's evidence of chronic inflammation or, or a swelling of the tissue in the maxillary sinuses. And we're gonna go in there and, and do the balloon procedure to enlarge that opening. We'll switch once I go back to the side and switch to oh. the other one. So. So it's the next step. So hopefully that's the most that you'll feel. Sorry guys, I'm just injecting the middle turbine. After I do this last, in last injection, we'll put you in comfortable.
Are you warm at all? I'm good. You're good? Okay. 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 <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> so Angie's my main assistant here, and she's... I've had it done as well. Had it done, so... <laughs> okay. So tell, tell me, did this help you? Yes. This procedure? Okay. Yes. I can breathe through my nose, and my colds are not as bad, and... Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your septum here uh, should be completely normal. This is by feel. I can see very well what I'm doing, but I'm also feeling what I'm doing. This is what the procedure. Oh, yeah. inside the nose that increases the surface area of the nose. Surface area of the nose for warming up the So that was it. Mm -hmm. that, did you feel that at all? Or?
Not as much as with normal surgery, just the body just self regulates the fluid and pushes it away. And then it's cold.
Sometimes we put a piece back in uh, to help the tissue heal. Uh -huh. To get some support for the tissue. Hmm. So that's the goal of this. And you already straightened it by just articulating it. Okay. So I'll take the dressing. So mm -hmm. yeah, once you cut it into three, and then we'll do another one. I know, I was thinking the same thing. Okay, we're all done? Good job. Good for you. Okay, so um, we're going to just get you into the other room with your husband and I'll come talk to you and then uh, make sure you're okay and then we'll get you out of here. Less than an hour, so that was good. He's a pro. Yeah. I knew that the first time I met him. Yeah, the anesthesia, the protocol, everything works really well, and he did great. So good job. How many have you done? Um, <laughs> I've done a lot. Yeah. And I kind of what you do is you start doing them all in the operating room, and you start, and then you slowly start doing more and more in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, we've gotten to the point where we have the right equipment, we have staff. Um, trained and I'm comfortable doing many, not all, but, but many of the things that we do that we would normally do just in the room and do in the clinic mm -hmm. on, on the right patient, on good patients like you. So The septum one is a little different. You have to work a little harder. Yeah, it's interesting because part of the septum is cartilage and that part, it's easy to work with, but it's also floppy. So I was like struggling with it. Uh, whereas when I got back to the bony part, I, I just had to, you know, brute force uh, break the bone there. So, and, but yeah, it's weird to talk about. But, but for you, what was that like? Um, some pressure and maybe a little bit of pain here and there. But okay. so this part of my nostril is now going to be freer. Right. Yeah. This is where the problem was on this right. The side. septum was more to that side, so you'll you'll be able to breathe better on that side because of the septum. Yeah. And also the turban, you, you move that over as well. Yeah. So, so I'll <clears throat> kind of show you on this diagram here. So, 
And this is only at one spot, but you can imagine this curve here, mm -hmm. it kind of, it exaggerates at some point so that um, it is blocking your breathing on that side. So we move these turbinates over here and here. Mm -hmm. And then these middle turbinates, this is where I kind of change the shape of them by, by squeezing them a little bit and then pushing them over. And touch right here. And that's deeper in, yeah. About right here, but a little deeper in. And these are? These are the turbinates. These are the ones at the bottom. At the bottom, okay. Yeah. And this is where we put the balloon here and here. So the balloon's going to uh, push this ethmoid air cell in so it's not blocking the opening on both sides. And then the ethmoidectomy is where I removed actually a small piece of bone here to also prevent that from blocking that, that normal drainage pattern. How long do the balloons stay in? They're, they're out. I put it in, I inflated it three times on each side. Oh, I see, out. okay, just to move the... It's, yep, it just does that to, to reshape the bone and to, um, it physically crushes the, the cells where there's chronic inflammation okay. and it gets rid of some of that inflammation. Oh, this is so. exciting, honestly. Yeah. How long should she be on the antibiotic? She'll be on that for 10 days. <laughs> She'll be on the pain medication as needed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it might wear off in a bit, bit here. So when you get home, you can take another one of the pain meds. Right. You can be fine. Um, Could we get more nausea pills? Yep. Is we'll that give okay? you a prescription for more okay. of those. Thank call you. Those in. Thank you. Yep. And then I will plan on seeing you, I think, what did we say, three weeks? I already have an appointment. February 20th, Wednesday, February 20th at 9.45. Yeah, so for the first week, I would say don't do any of the rinsing. Okay, just leave it leave it alone. After the first week, you can do just a gentle mist, the, the over-the-counter nasal saline mist, okay, or ocean spray, they call it. And then uh, I don't want you to rinse out the sinuses, anything dangerous, until after I see you. Right. Okay. And then you're going to do the ointment <laughs> inside the nose, too, for the next couple weeks. How far in do I go? You don't. All you do is you put a little on your finger, and you just go like that. You spackle it on the opening of the nose. Okay. And then Not you, inside. No, and as you breathe, it kind of works its way up in there. So you don't have to put it in or, uh, or worry about touching any of the areas that are healing. Okay. Okay. And uh, she sh should use hydrogen peroxide. Don't blow your nose yep. until I see you back. Sneeze, cough with your mouth open. Hot hydrogen peroxide <laughs> only if she gets some dry blood crust just on a Q-tip. But I don't think she's going to need to do that. Okay. Very, very minimal bleeding. Okay. I think she's going to do really well. <clears throat> We've established a friendship. Good, yes. We I, talked about we talked about music and mm -hmm. can I can I tell you that the first time that I met you um, was I don't know a number of months ago, and I knew right away that you were the gentleman that I had to have for my doctor and for her, and so I told her to come in and see you, and then she had these uh, nose problems, and so that's why she asked you to do the surgery because I knew the minute I met you that you were the kind of person that I wanted to help myself and my wife. So uh, it's a tribute to you because you're not only a great doctor, but you're very personable and you're very kind and extremely bright and knowledgeable. And I appreciate that immensely. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. And thanks for your trust with your family. I it means a lot to us, tr truly. Great. And, and um, I appreciate you being so thorough and, and um, caring. It means a lot to me. Okay. She's the most important thing I have. So. Well, it means a lot to me, too, and, and I couldn't ask for better patients than you guys. So thank you so much. Yes. You're welcome. Okay, so you speedy recovery, it will be, okay. and I'll see you back in a few weeks, and then just call if there's any other issues. And, All right. And, we'll, and we'll you take care of yourself, and okay. thank you again for everything. I appreciate it greatly. You're very, very welcome.